Yeah, thank you, everyone. So we have Peter's and this deployment lessons learned. So very quickly, we have a lot of and it moves in many teammates with super functional. And just to start with, I'd like to make sure we're all on the same page. So a quick refresher. I know when I'm talking about details, I'm basically going over the idea of keeping our definitions of different infrastructure resources on a each repo or in some other scenarios, different kind of repos. We'll check that out later. And I have those be automatically mirrored onto our infrastructure, in this case, our Kubernetes clusters. Why Kubernetes clusters? Because the tool we're going to be checking out is Spark CD, who is, which is um, GitHub's Kubernetes operator. It's an implementation for, for Kubernetes to get this GitHub's mentality implemented in there. There's lots of um, custom resource definitions and interesting topics we could call through with Argo, but just the two main ones uh, that we need to follow along are clusters, which are course sort of our latest clusters, and layouts. So in the context of Argo, an app is just a fancy a collection of Kubernetes resources that you intend to deploy in one or multiple clusters. Um, again, there's a bit of more complexity here, so you could have just go roll running his manifest or, or counters, which is how cool we're approach and um, we'll be talking about that in a sec. So if we have no time, we could go over some details about how to get our set up, that sort of thing, but that information is really, really available outside so many tutorials. Uh, instead of doing that, I want to just go straight into which kind of problems you would, you would probably would need to think about and figure out before actually deciding to um, implement this sort of solution in a large system in production. So the first one, how are we going to do release versioning and how is that going to affect our multiple environments? So the key news for us is that the versioning in MCD is very strong. We have loads of options to choose from. So in terms of working with Git as like the role of running manifest we're talking about or just helm charts and points directly deployed with pinballs on a deep repository. Uh, you could go with branches, acts, or commits. That gives you different opportunities to implement the environments in different ways. And also, if you go on the path with having Helm apps deployed to Argo, the capabilities are extended because you can use semantic versioning. So that's a very popular approach. You can have your major, minor, and patch version, and you can fix some of those, use wildcards, and then Basically, try to figure out with your team how much risk you want to take. Are you all right deploying the latest changes to production? Probably not, but probably to the development, the answer might be yes. And you can figure out that balance. All right. Um, so, as we said, it is possible to deploy uh, this boy uh, from charts into a Gordon cluster using Arlo. Uh, but it's not always so simple. So once you start using more of the community provided charts, we you know, tend to be large projects with many resources, you might find issues like there's no support for help books out of the box. You have to you know, take around certain things. It's very easy just need to swap the Helm annotation for an R annotation and it works out of the box, really. Uh, but it's something to keep in mind. Otherwise, you will struggle for a little bit. Okay, something that is also quite related to that, Helm offers a series of tools in order to um, order basically the resources in, uh, that you're going to be deploying with your release. So some of them could be like job centralized or database, those might go first, then update the images of your deployments, after that maybe another job to call some APIs on your services. And those are things that we all, would always do with Helm, even order resources within each of those spaces and very similar to the help books, this is something that we can do with Argo, but we have to switch some of the annotations, basically. Okay, I think we're going to read fast because from here on, I think it's the most interesting part of the, the talk. So, sync windows. This is something that is completely new. It's not something you could do just with Helm per se, right? So, it's great that we've been able to move the responsibility from the user over that really uh, to this system that automatically is going to be deploying certain things onto the clusters, but that, at the end of the day, it's removing control from us. And we want to find the balance, we want to feel safe by giving more control to this automated system. And in that sense, Sync Windows can be a really good tool 
So in a very uh, summarized way, it's just a way of saying we define a current expression that determines a certain time span in which employments are automatically allowed or denied. It can get quite complex because you could have a set of apps and clusters matched together with a collection of both allow and deny sync windows. Uh, I haven't personally found a case in which that was necessary, but it finds that it supported and um, I would suggest to make sure to really understand uh, uh, what's going to happen if you start combining those um, type of sync windows. Otherwise, the result might not be exactly what you expect. And I think some of the other speakers who were saying this before that uh, once the system gets uh, to a certain level of complexity, you start planning things that are trying to make it better, and sometimes you can make it worse, right? So in that sense, I would try to stay away from you know, too much complexity in this regard. Okay, now it's the really interesting part. So we have, by your implemental office, been able to move away from manual deployments or from having pipelines, uh, you know, calling kubectl or Helm, and instead we are creating our applications. But at the end of the day, someone needs to create those apps, one of our Argo instances. Probably there's some among you who are already thinking about how to solve that problem. And the cool thing is that, you know, the people who work on Argo already thought about that. So there's two ways we can automate that next step. So the first one, it's very simple, something I'm sure everyone here could get down in like an afternoon, basically the a Russian misting goal approach. We have one big app and smaller apps within. At the end of the day, an Argo CD app is just in charge of deploying Kubernetes resources. And our CD apps are Kubernetes resources, so there's nothing stopping us from creating a map that deploys for us. And those, in turn, would deploy our actual resources onto the target clusters. Again, that's very simple, but it makes everything neat, and I would, I would recommend it. And, uh, however, if you want to take it a step further, uh, you can go with application sets. So that's where this really starts to shine, because you don't really want to have the definitions be completely, how can I say this, sort of completely static, like I want app A on cluster 1, app B on cluster 2, etc, etc. What you would ideally want is to have some logic defined something that means something to us, to humans. So you could say, hey, on all the clusters that I have tagged with the label Dusty, I want to have an app for my debugging tools. And on all the clusters that are production, customer facing, or whatever, I would have monitoring tools or like an alert system, something like that. And um, that way, again, we're losing some of the control because we're adding logic to an automated system, but it is working for us, not against us. And you, again, are making everything more automated, which is what, at the end of the day, I think most of us are trying to do. Okay, so. I think so very fast. <laughs> so that's it. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Thank you. Thank you.